What's up, people? So today, I am installing an Airmar transducer in my stepped hole. I've been avoiding this like the plague. Um, what I've decided to do is mount as close to the keel as possible. Looks like I've got a little center thing right there. I want to make sure I stay well out of well from that so I can get the nut to tighten down. Um, that's where it's gonna go. I've marked my bunk. It looks like my trailer bunk comes to about right here. So uh, I'm gonna definitely have to mark it further down. Um, if you've ever heard the phrase measure twice, cut once, I've measured this about a hundred times and read about a hundred uh, reviews online about where to mount this thing. Uh, it's not something I'm really excited about doing, but this is a stepped hole boat. And uh, the transducer that's on the back of my boat is about as useful as a uh, screen door on a submarine once I get on plane. But that's where the, uh, the hole's gonna be. Uh, what I did to make that hole is I, um, this is the nut that holds the transducer on from the top. And then I just cut this piece of wood with the same hole saw that I'm gonna be using to mount the transducer so that I would be able to get the center of this. I didn't want to be off a little bit and then this flange come into contact with this ridge right here and then I wouldn't be able to tighten this and uh, that, would, that would be real bad because once you drill this hole you're committed. Alright, alright folks I did it. I drilled my pilot hole. What you're supposed to do is Drill yourself a pilot hole from the inside, and then go outside and drill your hole with a hole saw. So you can see my pilot hole right there. Um, as you can see, if I would have come any higher, I would have come into contact with the boat. I think that's gonna be a fantastic location for the transducer. I think it's gonna be low enough on the keel that uh, hopefully we get as much unobstructed water flow as possible. Well, you might think this is a bit excessive, but nothing can really ruin your day quite like fiberglass. And I've got to lay on this my back and drill this hole directly above me. So this will only, the misery will only last a little bit, but I just don't want to deal with being itchy and have it in my face. And I've gotten a piece of fiberglass in my eye before and it really sucks. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is a two and three eighths inch hole in the bottom of a perfectly good boat. I hope I didn't make a huge mistake. So, if you have bottom paint like I do, you're gonna wanna sand that back as well as there's a, a epoxy layer underneath that that you also are gonna wanna sand back. If you don't have any bottom paint, um, you're also gonna wanna take some sandpaper to at least just rough up the gel coat. And then once you're done, just wipe this surface down with uh, acetone because you're gonna want the uh, the marine sealant to really get a good bond to seal up the bottom of your boat. Your next step is to cover the test fit the transducer and cover the entire thing with masking tape. There's a sticker on here that says not to use any acetone, so you're not gonna want to get any marine sealant on your transducer. Cause then how are you gonna clean it off? Cause you can't use uh, any acetone. So cover the whole thing with masking tape and then uh, take a razor blade and trace the edge. And uh, that'll, that'll keep the boat um, clean and that'll also keep your transducer clean. So after tracing, taping and tracing with the razor blade, you're left with a perfectly sized hole and you're left with a perfectly masked transducer. So you can use all the sealant you want and not have to worry about um, cleaning up. So as you can see, we've put a generous amount of 3M 4200, not 5200, 4200 around the transducer. I'm gonna have someone feed it to me while I go inside to put the nut on. So there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Um, put her in there nice and snug. Uh, everything I read says just do it tight enough to get the uh, sealant to squish out. Uh, I used two pairs of channel locks 
to, uh, I still had to give it one ugga dugga. Um, but that's, uh, that's it. Hopefully it doesn't leak and, uh, hopefully I'll get better readings. And, uh, here it is from the, uh, top side. You can see I've got the arrow facing directly in at the keel. I did use the, uh, rubber seal. Uh, funny thing about the rubber seal, I'm glad I went ahead and used it. Down here, it's real tight. And, um, is even mushrooming out. But up here, it's still just a little bit, um wiggly so obviously the fiberglass is not completely flat and um, created a little bit of an issue so I'm glad I used that because the, the rubber kind of compressed to uh, account for the fact that um, the fiberglass isn't real even in here. 